Dave Duford here again at Final Expense Agent Mentor. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Friday. It's that time again. We are doing my regular weekly no BS final expense training uh, live stream on Facebook. So thanks for joining me and uh, hopefully you'll have a, a nice time enjoying uh, the topics at hand I'm going to discuss. So in today's video, what I'm going to discuss is how to stay organized for peak performance selling final expense. This question gets asked to me a lot. Uh, many people wonder how to specifically stay organized when it comes to leads, clients, and other factors. And so what I'm going to try to accomplish today the best I can is kind of give you some insight on how I stay organized. We're all different. Um, I would need somewhat of a level of organization, but not a terrible amount. Uh, honestly, because I'm more of a big picture guy instead of detailed oriented. Uh, so um, I don't do a lot of hyper detailed stuff, but enough to stay uh, consistent, doing well, and uh, nothing uh, that will, uh, that will uh, put me out of not doing a very good job. So anyways, now let me go ahead and um, kind of give you the overview of what we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about first how to organize your folder. Uh, that's the most relevant, specific to this particular instance of what you're going to be running into the most. Remember, organize your folder, uh, how to organize your extra supplies, what you need to do to stay on top of your extra supplies. I'm actually going to be showing you some pictures of my car, inside of my car, inside of my folder. Just going to kind of show you what I'm doing. Uh, also going to show you, um, or talk about at least, uh, how to organize those leads, again, for maximal use. And then lastly, talk about keeping a client list and how to organize that electronically as well as uh, the old-fashioned way. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about first the folder. That's the most relevant to this particular conversation at hand. So I'm going to bend over here and show you the exact folder that I use on a daily basis selling final expense. So this bad boy here is my 13-file um, case where I have um, everything inside of it stored. Hopefully it doesn't fall out. But if you see, when you expand this bad boy, I'll do it this way for maximal uh, effect. I've got a ton of space in here to store pretty much anything, but then it, it's pretty compact at the end of the day. Um, you can buy this particular thing. I don't. There's no brand on it, um, but it's look. If you find something like this, it's got 13, 12, some something like that cases. You want to get that. Um, it's very durable. I've had this one for a year and a half. It's finally starting to die on me. And um, it holds everything. Um, it's convenient. It expands when you need to have the extra space for all the apps you write, of course. And um, uh, it just allows you to organize by carrier. That's what I do with each little pocket is just stuff everything in one particular folder of whatever, whatever company it is that I'm working with. So just to throw this up again, um, one of the things that I put in here, of course, in the front pocket is I always carry a calculator. Uh, for obvious reasons when we're drawing up the premium. I also carry my license uh, for each state that I work with. Now this is in kind of like a plastic thing, uh, like a, um, I don't know what the word is, it's on top of the tip of, my, tip of my tongue. But what I prefer you to do is to get it laminated. Go to FedEx Kinko's, take your license or a copy of it, run it through the lamination process. It's very cheap, takes like five minutes, and that thing will last forever. It won't get beat up, bent up, look ugly, and that kind of stuff. So do that. Um, in your actual folder, as I look through here, I always recommend carry your agent guide, carry a couple copies of, of policies, applications, everything that's necessary for it. And um, that's pretty much all you need to walk into the house because now you've got it all convenient with you. You don't need to run back out and forth, back and forth to the car to grab stuff. Admittedly, I still do that because um, I don't remember to fill this thing up, so it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, you'll notice, though, again, this thing's pretty beat up. Um, the back end starting to fall out of it, uh, the string that usually attaches to it, pretty important, um, ain't there anymore. It fell off. It wore off. So you got to replace these things every year to year and a half. That's kind of what has been my experience. But I've used briefcases. I've used three ring binders. I've done pretty much everything you could possibly imagine. And this is what I use five and a half years into it. It repels water. It's easy to carry. It doesn't break on you like the crappy three ring binders do and you don't look like uh, a goon walking in with a briefcase no and, and no offense intended um the briefcase to me always signals oh it's a salesman but the binder thing doesn't necessarily so okay cool so that's the first thing bring up my list here talk about next um 
Oh, yes, extra supplies. So I'm going to bring you over to my desktop here. We're going to look at uh, actually how I organize my car. So give me one second. Almost there. Boom. Cool. All right, so let's take a big old picture here. Uh, this is my Honda Civic, and this is all the crap in the back of my car. As you can see, it's quite full with stuff. And the reason it is is because I carry three different states. I work Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama. And uh, this is how I do the best to organize what I can. It's not apparent here, but what the way that I do my organization is I organize by uh, type of carrier and then the states that they're with. So I'll look at, say, for example, here's Aetna. And within the Aetna files, Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee. And this is Security National, same deal. So i got to sift through that, find them, pull out the ones that are relevant to the state I'm in. Uh, continuing on here, now I recommend, by the way, if, if you'll notice too, I've got these boxes here. This is, the, this is as complex as it gets to actually organizing anything of mine. I just throw them in the box. These boxes are what they send you. Like the Security National box, um, if I was really desperate for box space, I'd just cut the top open, place it right in there, stuff a few more policies or, or carriers on top of that. And now I'm somewhat, or at least enough, organized. I uh, also keep, and this is just a close-up look of everything here. You can see a couple different carriers there in the organization. Uh, that's where I stuff my business cards, a little messy back there. Uh, honestly, I need to clean that a little bit. Uh, this is a must. Uh, you always, 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 always need to buy a Garmin Nuvi. I think it's a Nuvi. Anyway, it's a Garmin. And you can find these things for about 100 bucks or less at pretty much any major department store or online at Amazon, where I think where I bought mine. Mine lasted four and a half years before finally dying. I bought this one about a year ago. Uh, they work great. You want to make sure um, to have this handy so you can have your phone handy and not just depend on the Google Maps function or whatever mapping software you use. This is much, 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 much better. Um, uh, also, you'll notice this thing at the bottom here. Uh, I used to have the window suction cup. That thing always breaks. I don't know why. But this thing here, it's like an extra 15, 20 bucks. It's like a weighted thing and it just sits there on my dash, never falls around. It's very reliable. Um, I do like to have it higher on the window though, but this makes the job just as effective. So I would get one of these weighted things because the suction cup always blows out. Of course, you can't have a final expense business um, in full force without a uh, gallon or half a gallon of hand sanitizer. Not so much an organizational principle as much a health principle. As you can see, I use a lot of it. Uh, I probably got a new one of this about a year and a half ago. So I use the heck out of it. Uh, prevent germs. Who knows where these people put their hands? I don't want to know. Uh, but prevent the worst from happening. Buy yourself some hand sanitizer. Cheap to do. Uh, here I'm showing you, of course, I keep a bunch of pens handy uh, in my front dash. Also, this is cool right here. This is a multi-USB power cord, and it, it's a, I think it's a Garmin brand. So the Garmin goes into this, into the, uh, uh, gosh, the light thing, the light, you know what I'm talking about, wherever the power cord goes. And then there's two USB ports here. You can stick your, your iPhone 4 cords to this, or iPhone 5, 6, 7, whatever number it's now. Keep your phone charged, because that's important to have. And then here's delivery notices. Can't quite see it from this angle, but there's a little hole here in the side. I always keep these handy because when I'm out in the field running them, um, I'm using them. So these are how I keep my uh, stuff in my car organized. Uh, it works quite well. Uh, nothing too fancy, but I got everything I need there handy. Now some stuff I didn't mention, but you do want to make sure you carry with you on appointments, or at least in your cars. Um, make sure that you carry all the leads in the area that you're going to be in. Now, if you're like me, you have appointments set for you, or you do pre-appoint, or you set appointments a prior day. We all know that appointments generally sometimes no-show. Not all the times, but you're, everything doesn't happen perfectly as it should be. So, in order to keep efficient, make sure you're out there actually selling stuff versus just standing around not doing anything. Carry your folders with you for the designated zip codes or the designated counties if you work really rural areas. So, you always got something to dip into and go see. Uh, does it matter what kind of, um, does it matter? I don't designate the, the leads by zip code or by county. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. You just need people to talk to. People buy that sent leads in years ago, well, I don't know, years, but 6, 12, 18 months ago. Especially if you try and try and try and nobody, you're not, you're unable to reach them. Um, 
the bottom line is is that uh, if you carry them, eventually you run into them, and you'll be the first one to them, and it's like new, really. Um, as well as avatar leads, anything that you're using, you can carry those leads and door knock. Because the key is to stay busy. In this business, it's all about seeing people and planning for the moments where you may not have people to see as your schedule was supposed to work out. Okay, so that, that talks about the lead organization. And um, also here, you also have, um, what do you do with the applications that you write? So the applications that you write, what I do, I don't actually have a storage cabinet full of apps that I wrote from years ago. I scan everything on my computer so I can keep a digital file, the entire application. It's really easy and it makes my life easy. And the reason is, is that whenever I have a problem come up or somebody calls in, needs some help, they want me to assist them because their draft falls behind. And I really have no idea who this person is. I mean, I saw them a year ago or whatever. Um, I'll put their name in. They'll pop up on my search bar on my, my computer. I'll pull up their application and everything I need is right in front of me. A uh, lot faster, a lot more convenient than running an old-fashioned filing system, which would work. It's no problem with that. Uh, but this works very effectively. Um, additionally, uh, with any kind of digital backup or copies of anything, you want to have a backup. Uh, I have a dedicated uh, two terabyte hard drive, about 100 bucks. You can get them cheaper now. And I back up everything onto that terabyte hard drive, two terabyte hard drive, every week. I want to make sure that in case my computer completely goes kaput, I've got a plan B. I've got alternative measures to make sure I've got what I need to uh, talk to the people and go back to see them, which brings me to my final point. Um, when it comes to organization, the most important thing in my mind, we, the reason we stay organized is to stay effective. And staying effective to me is about keeping sales as well as making sales. And as far as the making sales portion, one of the things I always tell my agents is very important is that as you get time and, and experience in this business, you're going to want to get to the point where you call back on those old customers you sold a year ago. Many reasons why you should. Health changes for the better, sometimes. People stop smoking and otherwise couldn't qualify for plans now can with time. These are people you can go back and sell to. And they've already bought from you. They like you, I guess, to some extent, right? So they're going to be easier to set appointments with and you're going to close more deals. One thing I noticed about a year or two into this business is that about half the sales I made were people already had insurance. And so the first thing I thought was, where is the guy who sold the original policy? He should be here. I would think I would trust a guy I sold to one time or bought from one time before versus a brand new guy who's a total stranger coming in the door off of some card I sent in the mail. And the reality is these people never follow up. Most people will never follow up with their clients. And really, probably they're all out of the business if you want to be realistic. But the reality is, is that if you go back to these people, They'll buy more. A lot of people get used to paying something and now you can bump them up by a couple thousand. Or they didn't, this, the husband didn't buy. You can sell him now. Uh, I had a case where I sold a $5,000 policy to the guy. It was like 40 bucks a month. Came back a year and a half later, sold a $120 term policy to his wife. I mean, it just happened. I didn't do anything magic. I just followed up. It was there I took the business. And that's what you have to do. Why do that? Well, first of all, it's nice to go see people that we already got a relationship with that you like, that are good people, and you don't have to go through the whole song and pony uh, dog show again about you know who I am and what I do and all the stuff we normally have to do. And so there's more of a relationship there. And um, really, they, they trust you and like you. It's not like they're gonna question you and think that you're full of crap. Plus, you know, you can just ask for referrals more easier. Hey, you know, uh, you mentioned your brother last time. What about your brother and sister? What do they do for insurance? You know, so there's all sorts of opportunities by going back to people that you sold. And you got to stay organized, and that's the point I'm trying to make, in order to do that effectively. How I do it is very simple. I keep an Excel spreadsheet. I hire a virtual assistant to put it all together. You could do it yourself manually. It's not very hard if you keep up with it every week. Put all the information in there. And when it's time and I need to go do policy reviews, if I'm low on leads or I just want to go out and work without buying leads, I pull a list of that, and I can get booked. 10, 12 appointments in a day by seeing old customers in about an hour's time worth of calling. Really, it's that easy. It's people don't mind seeing you again as long as you weren't a jerk the first time. So do that. Uh, more advanced method, probably more effective than the way that I do it, is to use the CRM system. Um, the one that's always mentioned to me is one-page CRM, if you've never heard of it. 
go to it, uh, onepagecrm.com. You can use it on your iPhone, plug everything in. It's really easy to use, reminders, that kind of thing. Um, again, you know, it's one of my weaknesses, um, organizationally speaking. I do just enough. Good enough is good enough for me. And uh, my main concerns are policy reviews. If I need to see people, I got the Excel sheet. I keep up with it every once in a while, update it every couple of months. And then when it's time, hey, call them up, go see them, got people to talk to. So I don't keep it any more complicated really than that, even though you could and probably would be better. So that is it for my uh, Facebook live stream. I'm going to pull up my old uh, screen here. Hopefully, hopefully everybody has enjoyed uh, what we talked about today. It's actually uh, pretty useful and interesting. And... Um, if there's anything I can do for you, if you have any questions, leave them down here at the bottom of the screen, and uh, I'll be more than happy to address any questions or concerns you might have about anything final expense related. In fact, if you've got questions and you'd like to leave some information about them, um, leave them. <laughs> I'll turn that into a video. Uh, this organization video is really built upon questions I got a lot of, so I wanted to turn it into an actual training session. So. Thanks so much for joining. Again, join me every Friday at 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and I'll talk more about final expense and your questions then. Until then, have a great weekend, and thanks so much for joining. Y'all take care.